Hi everyone, it's just me. So this is the um, social studies video that's going to go along with your Scotland's landscape grid that um, that we've already posted to you, okay? So this could be one of many um, things that you could do to do with Scotland's landscape this week as one of your bits of learning. So the reason I'm doing this video narration is for people who may um, struggle with the reading of it or maybe there's words you don't understand. Um, I'm not going to go into all the, the meanings of stuff just now. I just really want you to listen to it and find the information. So there's a set of questions that are also attached um, to the post that we've sent you. Um, and what to do is, if you can, try and just use your markup on your phone and you can write in the answers. But there's alternatives on there as well if you struggle to do that, okay? And do our best to try and get something back to us and we'll see how we go on. Okay, so here we go. Scotland's landscape and it's the physical features of Scotland's landscape, okay? So what we're doing is, is that you can describe the major characteristic features of Scotland's landscape and explain how these were formed. And our aim for this is that you can identify and describe the main features of Scotland's landscape. So first, physical features. The physical features of Scotland's landscapes are natural features and not man-made. Can you think of some natural features of the Scottish landscape? Now, this is a great opportunity to pause and try and have a think, what are the natural features that we would see in Scotland? We did do this last year, see if you can remember. The alternative is, if you just want to read this yourself, you could um, just mute me just now and just read it yourself, okay? So here are the physical features. Islands, coastline, rivers, lochs, hills, glens, and mountains. None of these are man-made. These are all the natural physical features of Scotland's landscape. Okay, physical. We can divide Scotland's landscape into three areas. At the top, we have got the Highlands and Islands. In the middle, we've got what's called the Central Lowlands. And in the south, we have got the Southern Uplands. The Highlands and the Islands. So the Highlands of Scotland have mountain ranges like the Grampians, the Coolins and the Cairngorms. These mountains were carved by the movement of glaciers during the last ice age. So think of a really, really massive ice cubes cutting through the land. That's what the glaciers were. In the west of the Highlands, there are mountains that can be up to 1,200 metres high. The summit, that's the top, of Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in Britain, is 1,344 metres above sea level. Fossils have been found in the northwest Highlands from 750 million years ago. These are some of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. Highland mountains are popular in summer and winter with walkers, climbers and skiers. They are beautiful but can be very dangerous when the weather changes. The Coolin Mountains are found on the Isle of Skye. They are known as the Red Coolin and the Black Coolin. The Red Coolin is in the east. Uh, the Red Coolin in the east are soft and rounded, whereas the Black Coolin in the west are sharp and jagged. Okay. The Highland Boundary Fault. Now, we did boundary, but we did fault lines in our um, natural disasters and our forces topic this year. That's where the Earth's crust, like an eggshell, is broken around the world. So, Scotland has these. The Highland Boundary Fault is a break in the rock of the Earth's crust. This runs across Scotland from an area around Helensburgh near us in the southwest to Stonehaven in the northeast. This fault line naturally divides the mountains in the north from the lowlands in the south. As well as mountains, there are a lot of valleys in the highlands called glens. The Great Glen is another fault line in the Earth's crust and runs from the west coast of Scotland to the north. The Great Glen is a natural travelling route in the mountainous area. The Caledonian Canal follows a route through the lochs and roads, uh, and roads travel through here. The lochs in the Great Glen include Loch Ness and Loch Linney. Islands. Scotland has 790 islands. However, only 95 of these have people living on them. The largest group of islands include the Orkneys and Shetland Isles in the north and the inner, in the north and the inner and outer Hebrides off the west. 
The Shetland Isles are the most northerly part of Scotland and are actually nearer to Norway than they are to the Scottish mainland. There are very few trees in Shetland due to the high winds and weather. This island is famous for its Shetland ponies. The, uh, the main town in Shetland is Lerwick. The highest point in Shetland is Ronas Hill at 450 metres. Island still. The Outer Hebrides are a group of islands off the north coast of mainland Scotland. The main town on these islands is Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis. The Isle of Lewis is the largest island in this group. I'm pretty sure that Mr Clark is from Stornoway but you might need to ask him that when we go back to school. Next part, the Inner Hebrides. The Inner Hebrides are a group of islands between the coast of of uh, mainland Scotland and the Outer Hebrides. Ferries travel between many of these islands and the mainland. The island of Skye can be travelled to by the Skye Road Bridge. The Central Lowlands, that's where we are, this yellow part in the middle. The Central Lowlands are between the Highlands in the north and the Southern Uplands in the south. They stretch from the Firth of Forth on the east coast to the Firth of Clyde on the west coast. Scotland's capital city, Edinburgh, and Scotland's largest city, Glasgow, are found at either side of the central lowlands. Over half uh, lowlands, over half of Scotland's population live in this area. The Southern Uplands. Southern Uplands are the most southerly part of Scotland. These lands border with England. The Uplands have ranges of hills like the Galloway Hills and the Lammermuir Hills. Although they are not as mountainous as the Highlands, the highest peak in the southern uplands is Merrick at 843 metres high. One Lock Head in the uh, Lowther Hills is the UK's highest village and is found in the southern uplands. It is 430 metres above sea level. Coastlines. The Highlands and Islands, the Central Lowlands and the Southern Uplands all have coastlines, rivers and lochs. Why is that? Because we are part of an island. Scotland's mainland has over 6,000 miles or 9,660 kilometres of coastline. The beaches, rocks and cliffs at the coastline are always changing due to erosion or deposition and changing sea levels. Depending on the type of rock at the coastline, it can be worn away or eroded over a period of time. Rocks like clay and sandstone are easily worn or eroded by rainfall or the action of the sea. Harder rocks like granite or slate take longer to erode. There are sea arches like the Bow Fiddle near Port Nocky on the Banffshire coast and sea stacks like the Old Man of Hoy in Orkney. All around the coastline of Scotland that show, um, how, um, show how some of the rock has been worn away. There's an example there in the picture at Port Nocky. Deposition. Deposition means that material is being deposited on a coastline rather than being worn away. The sand, the sand and pebbles we see on each on these beaches may come from cliffs and rocks that have been eroded. Rivers. A river starts high in the mountains and flows down over land until it reaches a loch or the sea. Rivers begin underground or by rain falling or snow melting on the mountain tops. Scotland's rivers are popular with anglers and fishermen. The River Dee and Spey are famous for salmon fishing. The River Tay is the longest river in Scotland. The River Spey is the fastest flowing river in Scotland. And the River Dee and the River Don both run through the city of Aberdeen on the east coast. Lochs, not lochs, lochs. A loch is a glen filled with water. Sea lochs are open to the sea. Loch Ness is one of the most famous lochs in the world because some people believe the Loch Ness monster lives there. Loch Ness holds more water than all of the lakes in England and Wales put together, so there is plenty of room for Nessie. Loch Ness is the largest loch in the Great Lake Glen. Loch Lomond is the largest loch in Britain by surface area and is found on the Highland Boundary Fault that we've just spoken about. Yeah, Volcanoes. Again, we did this last year. Scotland used to have active volcanoes and the remains of volcanic activity can still be found across Scotland today. Here's some examples. 
Arthur C. Arthur C. is an extinct volcano. It last erupted 342 million years ago. Today, this summit towers over Edinburgh. Maybe some of you have climbed it. Castle Rock. Castle Rock in Edinburgh is a volcanic plug upon which Edinburgh Castle sits. Volcanic plugs are made when magma hardens inside a vent of an active volcano. And lastly, the Black Coolin. The Black Coolin is an 11 kilometer long mountain range found on the Isle of Skye. Yes, there is a spelling mistake there if anyone noticed. It has many peaks. It was formed as a result of volcanic activity. Scotland's landscape. So, what do you know now about the features of Scotland's landscape? Have a wee think about that and answer some of the questions attached. If you can, try and use markup or try and use a writing tool online just to note some words, okay? Might, um, if you can type into it and it means you can do a little bit more, like a sentence, that's even better. It's going to be trial and error to try and figure out what is the best way for you to be able to send stuff back to us, okay? So, like we're all in this together, let us have a try and see how you go on. Okay, bye-bye.